A very good afternoon to you all, and uh, I thank uh, organizer as well as Professor Professor Raja for inviting me to be part of this event today. Uh, yesterday, uh, someone was asking about NML by seeing my uh, this uh, card. I thought I'll just introduce NML. Uh, we are one of the 37 laboratories of uh, CSIR. We work in all these areas. We have six R&D division. We work in mineral processing, metal extraction, metal uh, 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 characterization, alloy making, as well as uh, uh, other uh, uh, technology development with regards to metal and minerals. We have the six areas of working with other supporting division. We have 120 scientists. And we have a small group of corrosion and uh, coatings. That's corrosion engineering and surface engineering. I'm uh, not going to focus on very specific topic, but I, I just want to sh show a few pieces of work that we have carried out at Corrosion and Coating Group at NML. And these are some of the areas which we are pursuing at NML right now. These are the corrosion area, atmospheric corrosion, pitting and crevice corrosion, flow assisted corrosion and erosion corrosion, environmental assisted corrosion, cracking and molten salt and high temperature corrosion. As far as corrosion protection is concerned, we are looking into microstructural engineering, alloy modification, electroplating, and galvanizing, and we are also working on poly, uh, polymeric coating. We, uh, I'll show a few examples what we recently did in these areas. This is one uh, area which is atmospheric corrosion. We have characterized various uh, corner of the countries with regards to corrosion under uh, these uh, C12 see ex extreme corrosive condition of the different location uh, and we have included urban to industrial to coastal area of the country and we showed this by uh, looking at the various materials including aluminum alloys, ferrous alloys and copper, bronze and brasses. Similarly, we have also looked at the uh, corrosion issue within the steel plant particularly from the structural point of view and we could divide 21 section of the steel plant. So this data can be used for better uh, protection strategy in place within the uh, uh, plant. And uh, we can sh see that some of the areas, especially with the, uh, near the blast furnace, which is, I think, known as granulated uh, plant, showed one of the most corrosive uh, zone. And this uh, categorization has been done using structural steel. This is one of the uh, activity, uh, another activity that we, are, we have been pursuing, this flow assisted corrosion. And this is one uh, uh, loop that we have developed for uh, particularly to look at the water injection corrosion. Water injection is used in oil and gas in this industry to basically carry the water, either sea water or produce water to enhance the water oil recovery. And that undergo a very severe corrosion. We uh, try to look at the features, what features we should bring into this uh, loop so that we can simulate the corrosion. Uh, it uh, consists of flow rate can be uh, used up to 1.5 meter per second, up to 45 degrees Celsius we can go. And oxygen controlled and oxygen monitoring both we can do because oxygen used to be a very important uh, way to uh, control corrosion in the uh, water injection pipelines. Lesser is the co uh, oxygen and generally it is taken that if it is less than 20 ppb oxygen in the water injection pipeline, one can uh, reduce the corrosion to a large extent. Then we have a provision of coupon weight loss measurement within this loop and also we have electrochemical polarization provision so that we can connect uh, to the specimen and we can look at the in situ corrosion while there is a flow. We also looked at the development of uh, uh, chr chromium variant steel because for this particular application, we know there is this low carbon steel or either we have a corrosion resistant alloys uh, at our uh, disposal to use, but we are looking uh, from the balance, cost balance point of view that we can use 0.5 or 1 chromium steel. When we look at the uh, 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 different addition of chromium, I think we have suggested 0 0.5 chromium steel to be used, which could bring down the corrosion by about 35% while in flow. And we have not uh, looking at 1% now because uh, possibly welding uh, reason or some standards we have to have a 
carbon equivalent below certain value, possibly around uh, 0.6 or so. And in our case of 0 0.05, uh, 0.5 chromium, it is around 0 0.4 or 0 0.43, which can match the welding uh, uh, standard requirement for the API grade steel. Then uh, we also look at the material selection criteria as of uh, as we keep coming uh, uh, with the, the complaint of our industrial partners or friends that we have the same kind of alloy taken, but uh, we are suffering from different uh, extent of pitting corrosion at different location. I just want to, uh, we have done this work to basically answer whether same grade of steel can vary with regards to uh, pitting corrosion resistance. We have taken six same alloy of around uh, this uh, APS X60 alloy from di different sources, six different sources we have used. We have categorized all the uh, steels. We have categorized each coupons from each source. And then we have measured corrosion potential in a controlled environment so that we don't go into beyond pitting potential reason. And then we Use, we have categorized with regards to grain size, uh, volume fraction of uh, inclusion, type of inclusion, size of inclusion, as well as uh, phase fraction, especially uh, ferrite percent or, uh, or cementite fraction. And it's not easy to have a, a, a one parameter varying and all five or six keeping constant because we can't have that control. So we have uh, used various specimen and we have uh, put them in an Excel sheet and we have fitted those uh, parameters in a uh, uh, model called ENFIS. Uh, this is uh, basically adaptive neurofuzzy inference, which uh, for me as a layman looks that it does need a small amount of data as opposed to ANN, and also it uh, accept the logics. So we thought that this could be one good model that we can use and we can predict the various pitting uh, susceptibility of different materials. And this is one graph I put only one so how it varies with the complex inclusion. As you know that with increasing or improving the inclusion engineering in steel making, we are much uh, less amount of MNS kind of inclusion, now, but we have a complex inclusion. Complex inclusion means that we have an inner core of alumina or outer CAS or MNS kind of uh, uh, compounds, but yet those compounds are still corrosive, cor corrosion uh, prone, and we have shown that if you have a different area fraction of cementite, for example, 2.67, this is how it varying uh, with the complex inclusion. And this has a 5.06% of cementite, and this is how it varies. Higher the pitting potential means better is the corrosion resistance, better the, is the pitting resistance. And that's how we uh, feel that uh, once you select the grade of steel, uh, grade may be same, but you uh, uh, may uh, not be sure that it has all the grade, all the uh, uh, steel from same grade of steel from the different sources as similar kind of pitting resistance. It might not be true, and that's what this slide is showing. Further, we have looked into the another uh, materials. We are looking for more and more advanced grade of steel, API grade steels. But as uh, yesterday, I think Professor Raja mentioned that when we select the material, we don't uh, put or we don't take uh, uh, corrosion as a as a uh, one of the guidelines. So that uh, often uh, we look for steels, for higher grade of steels with regards to strength. So when we go for X50, X50, 60, or X70, or X80, we go by the strength of the steel. But if you look at the uh, corrosion resistance, is it going to be same or better or poor? Because after all, we are going to, in, in using the higher grade of steel, means we are going to reduce the th uh, cross-section thickness of the steel. If you reduce the cross-section of thickness and it has a poor resistance, I think you are going to lose the money that's what we are, you are anticipating. So this is this slide is taking three different uh, steel, API 60, API 70, and API 70 from the two different sources. And you can see that the, these uh, corrosion rate are measured in the flow solution. And you can see that sometime X60 is better corrosion resistant than the X70. And all the, uh, uh, these values I'm showing is repeated several times to uh, avoid any confusion with regards to uh, claiming of these results. So if you see uh, also that in some case X60 is better than X70, and also if you look at the X70 source from two different manufacturer, in one case it is much better, in another case it is poorer. If you look at this red one, it's increasing with the speed of the flow and then decreasing. But in other case it is increasing with the flow. 
uh, we try to look at what is happening with when uh, the X70, one of tho those increasing with the f uh, flow and then it's further decreasing. We try to, we are looking in fact right now, we, are, we have not completely investigated, but one of the reasons, because we have seen the corrosion product, which seems to be similar in all the cases, but there was a difference in uh, 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 the phase of the oxide. The morphology of the oxide was different, and further into um, uh, fine uh, characterization, we found that the crystalline to non nanocrystalline and mixture of the non nanocrystalline amorphous phase are visible when we are reducing, when we are f uh, not noticing that the corrosion rate is reduced with further increase in the um, uh, speed of the flow. And similarly, uh, uh, very interestingly, that we are getting incorporation of silicon as well as chromium in the amorphous oxide and we have further need to look into the reason why uh, this is happening. Another piece of work which we are carrying out, you all of you know that the solar energy is, is, is now a hot topic and it's increasing uh, uh, to be used. Solar extraction or solar energy extraction goes by two ways, either by using the photovoltaic uh, cell or photovoltaic application or the other is that concentrated solar po power plant what happens in concentrated solar power plant is that the, the people use uh, salt medium to absorb energy and use that energy for further application or generation of the electricity. But what happens, this is one of this, uh, this is picture of one of the biggest solar power plant, which is Quasite 3 in Morocco. It is targeted at 580 megawatt uh, production of the, from the solar uh, power. It hosts about 60% sodium nitrate plus 40% potassium nitrate salt, and that salt volume uh, is 140,000 uh, uh, ton of salt mixture. And this is presently is nitrate salt, but soon it is going to be replaced by the chloride salt, as because chloride salt is be better thermal stable than the nitrate salt, because at higher temperature, this salt is going to be dissociated as opposed to mag magnesium chloride or sodium chloride or potassium chloride. Also, uh, the chloride salt has a high capacity, but the issue is going to be with regards to corrosion. The uh, material which is going to host this much of salt is going to be affected by corrosion. And when we talk about the chloride salt, it definitely would, uh, would be uh, susceptible to, I mean, materials is going to be susceptible to pitting corrosion. And if lo you look at the high temperature, that's going to be oxidation as well. We have uh, tried the uh, grain boundary engineering. Someone Okay, so we have uh, looked, showed the grain boundary engineering can reduce the uh, percolation of uh, this uh, localized corrosion from along the grain boundary, and this is one the grain boundary engineered material, which has about 70% of uh, low energy boundary, along with the disruption uh, uh, by uh, uh, of the those high random high angle boundaries, and we can reduce it by about 50%. This is one typical case study that we have come across. There is a bracket used for the uh, revolving uh, uh, that box, uh, that drum, in fact, in the washing machine. And that is made up of aluminum uh, silicon. But this was prematurely, prematurely failed in many times uh, uh, that uh, they come to us, found out the, find out the uh, failure reason, improve the coatings, and also look at the modification of the alloy. So we found that the most of the corrosion, and corrosion in fact went through the interdendritic region, and we found there are two microstructures we found, and this one is the fibrous eutectic. This is silicon, typically you can see the silicon uh, uh, needles. This fibrous was more corrosion susceptible, and along with that we found that there was an, a large amount of iron, aluminum kind of intermetallics. Detergent as well was a very big role to play in increasing the corrosion. You can see the as, for, as high as four times uh, corrosion rate increase when using variant, varied detergent available in the market. Then we look at the um, modification of the alloy. which We found that strontium could reduce the corrosion significantly much below the what they, their alloy would, uh, they were using the alloy. Then another uh, case, we have gone through the pretreatment process before they use the coating because they don't want to use any abrasive cleaning in line while they produce the machines. We have uh, come up with the process, two different processes uh, of the pretreatment because we want to uh, use some uh, pretreatment like uh, phosphating and also want to bring out by other pretreatment zirconium oxide on the surface so that we can use the adherence of the coating. And we have submitted the coated specimen. We have coated about six to seven 
different coatings. We submitted the coatings to the uh, uh, vendor or to the manufacturer. And fortunately, most of the coating passed two, I think, out of seven field at two different tests. This is another example of a very uh, interesting example. We are not, uh, I'm not showing the corrosion here, but I'm taking the principle of uh, corrosion. I'm using the principle of corrosion to clean the oxide scale on the steel wire. You may be knowing that steel wires are processed through the annealing and then it generates the heat treatment scale, which is difficult to remove other than pickling. Pickling has many issues, we, you know, I don't need to tell that. So that the green, greener uh, methods are to be invented. And this is the one method that where we use the ultrasonic uh, assisted cleaning using electrochemical principle where we use the reverse uh, the kind of uh, pulse square wave to uh, uh, taking into anodic corrosion and uh, cathodic part so that we can uh, uh, detach the surf oxide surface from the metals and also we can generate more and more bu hydrogen bubbles as was generated by the ultrasonic so that we can create the bubbles shock waves which can uh, impact the oxide and loosen the oxide. This is one uh, coating. Typically, we have used many, uh, we have developed these uh, coating system at our place. The first one is aluminum coating, which has been uh, received from the uh, non-aqueous bath, and it is used to replace the uh, uh, cadmium, which is environmentally uh, restricted coating nowadays. So aluminum coating is used to be one of them. We have tested on the scribed and non-scribed sample. We have process subjected them to Salt spray, uh, it passed more than 1,500 test, uh, hours test. Another coatings we have in, uh, ZN FE and ZN MN coating. All the coating passed salt spray as well as hydrogen embrittlement, which are necessary for this application. This is another uh, development that we are doing. You might have about heard about the hot dip process simulator and zinc galvanizing coating. Here we are also uh, galv uh, doing the ga color galvanizing, which is unique, I think. Nobody has done that. And also, we have used the special pre-treatment, pre a prior coating of iron for the high-strength steel uh, galvanizing, which uh, seems to be very difficult due to having element of ox uh, aluminum and silicon, which forms oxide, and which are difficult to uh, treat uh, with the galvanization and leave the empty space. We have done that prior FE coating on that. These are the polymeric coating we developed at uh, our place. And these, this is one anti-tarnishing lacquer for copper alloy and silver alloy, which is already transferred to two different companies. This is another chromium-free passivator of copper and brass, which again, this is based on the self-assembled monolayer and for shorter time of uh, protection, and is again transferred to two of the different companies. Thank you very much. And before that, I'll acknowledge my colleagues at NML, on behalf of whom I'm making this presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a wonderful talk covering various uh, domains. Are there any questions? One quick question. If there are no questions, I think we'll thank uh, Dr. Agvir Singh once again for the excellent talk. Thank you. So in this session, we had four talks, two of them relating to aerospace uh, domain and two relating to the general domains. and. Uh, all, all the talks were excellent, and I thank on behalf of the organizers, uh, the speakers for having delivered a wonderful talk, and I thank the organizers for having given me this opportunity to chair this session. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to all speakers for sharing their insights, and a special thanks to Professor Raghu Prakash for guiding us through the session.